we're going to have a chance to uh, review some of the articles that are written for the upcoming COA journal. Uh, the article that we will be discussing today is Let Us Teach Us, A Diverse Call to Action for Adult Education. We have Daquana Harris here today, um, the author of the, of the article. Um, Daquana, just tell us a, a little bit of, uh, of why you wrote this article for the COA Journal. Absolutely, and thank you for having me. Uh, again, yes, I'm Daquana, Daquana Harrison uh, from Elevation Educational Consulting Group. And uh, adult ed is my field. I um, And so when I saw that COA was opening up an, a journal that was focused on racial inequalities, uh, that really excited me. Uh, you know, it's been a generational issue in education, uh, racial inequalities that have been occurring here in the U.S. And to have the adult ed world to start to really focus in on it, um, I just think it's really important. I think it's something that many of us have been talking about for a very long time, but to see COABE put out a journal for it, to see it um, possibly being an issue that we are gonna focus in on as a community, right? To start this conversation journal. I just thought it was extremely important to, to put an article in. Um, more important, I had to think through, um, you know, what avenue is it, right? So racial inequality has such a large spectrum of ways that we can uh, interpret it, see it. Um, but I really started in on focusing on our teachers in our career field. Uh, we talk all the time in adult ed about having career ladders for our students. <laughs> yeah. And um, I really wanted to have a conversation about how we could make adult education an actual career, viable career choice for minority um, teachers to, to be able to feel uh, that they could really contribute uh, to the work that they want to contribute to without having uh, to uh, make certain other demands on their lives. <laughs> Well, again, I was fortunate enough to be able to get uh, a chance to read the article. And, and again, this this uh, interview will allow folks and hopefully draw some folks towards um, um, the article that you wrote. And again, it was for, for me, it was it was very um, um, timely. Um, and and I just I just loved it, the, the article. Um, and, and so how do you feel that adult education practitioners will benefit from reading this article? But again, I think as we as we look at things, not only how will they benefit from it, but how will the adult learners benefit from reading the article? Yeah, I think that every level of adult ed uh, could be um, influenced and supported uh, through this article. One way to look at this I mean, the article is broken down with, you know, ideas around, you know, why it's important for the, the student. Um, and so the kind of student focus of what it means to have minority teachers in a classroom, right? Um, it's in K-12 education and multiple other realms, it's been found that minority teachers don't only support and help um, and have better outcomes for minority students, but also for students, um, non-minority students and white students. Um, and so we touch on that, right? We touch on the importance of having uh, minority uh, teachers for students, um, immigrant teachers and teachers, multiple different backgrounds uh, that could mirror the students and how that affects the classroom and how positive outcomes have been shown uh, worldwide when you're able to expand your teaching pool. And so, you know, we, we focused that in on the students uh, at the beginning of the, the article, because I think that that's an important aspect. That's always what people want to know in adult ed, right? Mm -hmm. We are really focused and I love that. Um, but another piece of it, what it means for the staff members. And so while for some people, this is a new conversation, I can tell you um, that, you know, many of our minority staff members, many of our, um, what we now call BIPOC, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Black people of color, uh, BIPOC, many of our BIPOC uh, educators have been having this conversation. Um, whichever uh, cultural background they're coming from, this conversation has been happening. And so I'm really excited to start to lift those voices up, to lift those stories up and those ideas up, um, as well as, you know, the importance of, of what it means for leadership 
right? And so leaders uh, who are looking to really be able to um, increase their retention, right? Uh, leaders who are looking to make sure that they go beyond just getting a few more points on a test for their students. And they start to look at their students in a holistic way, look at their staff in a holistic way, understanding social emotional learning and how that um, is, can be incorporated in how you make sure that you build a true community that represents and mirrors the needs of your students. That all comes within diversity. Um, and so it's, it's, it's the students, the teaching, the teachers and the staff, and most of all the leadership, because with change, uh, leadership has to be ready for that. Uh, and so this call to action, um, you know, really does focus in on all of those levels of adult education. Well, for me, again, this article was, was maybe like an early Christmas present, but I could open open that up and 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 and, and, and read that and, and, and again some of the, the the steps. And again, I don't want to give too much away from the article it, itself. Um, a, a truly, a call to action with with those points that that you made again of um, elevating staff and students. Uh, looking at it as a, as a holistic approach and an inclusive approach of, of in, instruction. So, um, with that being said, uh, what do you hope that the readers of this article um, will take away from uh, after they read it? Well, uh, hopefully they're as enthused as you are. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> should um, be. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I, I really hope that um, for those who, um, for instance, have been working for racial equality and equity in education and particularly in adult ed, I hope that it gives them one more um, piece of the puzzle for themselves, uh, one more way to push that idea and the need for that. For those of us who are kind of more in the middle, who know that know and understand that there's some things that need to change, but not sure how. Hopefully, that call to action and, and like you said, there are actual action steps in here. Hopefully, that gives them a few points of where to start, because quite often people know that something needs to happen, but have no idea how to make it happen. And so, hopefully, they'll look at those uh, action steps and take a few of them. For those of us who don't see this as an issue, because there are uh, you know, who are, are thinking, what is this about? We're at work. Why do we need to talk about race? We're just educators. It doesn't matter. Uh, for those of you who, who may think that I want to hear, you know, from you all, those conversations um, can definitely be sparked uh, from this, uh, this article. Um, I think that in the article, it gives some, some really strong points as to how this could make a difference for everyone. Um, it gives points and, you know, I talk about universal design um, and I hope one day to have, um, we did the universal design, then we did universal design for learning. Hopefully we'll have the design for e um, racial equity. Uh, mm -hmm. And in that, um, the point being with universal design is that everyone benefits, right? So that mm -hmm. that the sidewalk that is for people in wheelchairs benefits people who are using canes. It benefits people who are using strollers. If you're you're taking your your grocery cart right into your apartment, so some of the steps in here I hope people can see um, are universally beneficial, right? And so. Those who, again, aren't in the space to understand why this is important, just look at the solutions. Forget that it's about racial equity and look at the solutions, you know, increased pay. Even if you don't. Right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can all agree with that. That's a good thing. Right. And, you know, no one can ever come into adult ed for, for the purpose of being rich. <laughs> right. right. So, you know, with that in mind, um, you know, come into this, into reading this, um, first knowing where you are with it, mm -hmm. that you either have a bias towards or against it, mm -hmm. um, and sit in it and think about it as our field, because this is what it is to me. It is about saying to ourselves that it is time that our field have some changes. Absolutely. It's no longer the field where, you know, you, 
get a few books, get a few people who got some kind of degree and they can teach these folks who don't know X, Y, and Z. That can't be where we are anymore, right? It was fine that we came from a philanthropic background. It was amazing and the, the way that our community organizations in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s came together, created these strong systems that we now all uh, you know, stand on. Mm -hmm. But that was our infancy, right? To grow up, right? Right. For us to look at some of these, um, what are norms for adult education, and say, who is it really helping? Who is it really supporting? And change is hard. Um, and I and I completely understand that. Uh, but I do think that it's important to really focus in on the changes that we need. And I, I do want to read one, two sentences from it to kind of give people that idea sure. around that change. And it's, it's towards the ending. Um, and it says here, I'm going to start um, here. It says, we must make systematic changes to everything from our funding structures, manner of training, job security, and more to open our field to more educators of color. And, and, and that to me is what it is, is that it's really about opening our field up. It's about getting new and fresh ideas into our field. Um, it, and it is also about being able to, you know, go to a co conference and see more people, more leaders who look like the students that we are serving. Uh, it is about that. Uh, and, so, and so really think through, as you all are reading this, um, you know, what can you do at your level, at your program, within your state, if you're a part of the association? Um, are there any points in here uh, that you yourself um, could take a step towards? Well, uh, again, I want to say just thank you for the work that you do, the leadership um, that you have shown throughout the state of Maryland, um, the folks here in Michigan will definitely read uh, this article. I know my staff, it'll be some required reading for them as we kind of move, move forward and do some things. But uh, again, the, 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 the points of the universal design, the, 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 the roadmap, I think that you really lay out in, in this for programs who may be early in their journey, um, having discussions about diversity and inclusion, um, we, we talked a little bit before about belongingness. Once we get the folks into those positions that they um, are actually welcome within uh, our adult ed community. Um, and so again, I, I, I thank you again and honor you for the work that, that, that you're doing, the leadership and guidance. Um, any final thoughts for um, folks uh, that have a chance to, to, to read the article? Um, I think one one thing, um, so I have my adult ed space and I have the kind of diversity, equity, and inclusion space that I'm also in. And um, and in that space, there are many ways that, that uh, consultants and other people support organizations. Mm -hmm. And that conversation has changed a lot since the summer. Mm -hmm. I, I um, you know, want to, to one, recognize um, other leaders in, in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and hope that they see adult education as a major part of what they um, should be supporting. But I also want to, you know, uh, really press uh, to the adult education world that this is not work that you can just put on somebody in your program. It is imperative that one who can support you from the outside in to at least start this work. Um, you know, a lot of times this kind of work ends up on the backs of the marginalized people, on the backs of the people of color in your organizations. And, and so it is, it is really important to think about the same way, um, you know, in 2014 when the GED changed, we all went and found all of the the resources we could, right? Mm -hmm. and we educated ourselves. So if we're really gonna make this change, it is really gonna be important to find the resources that you need, to move it past just saying, hey, you, you 
does a lot or, you know, hey, you minority person, uh, take on, you know, this project, get us together. Uh, so, you know, just remember that there are experts out there that, uh, that do this work um, and that it is, it is work worth um, finding a budget for um, and taking it beyond just your words, but into your action and also using your privilege. Uh, if you are a part of a large program, uh, you know, support other programs and making sure that they get this done. Um, you know, bring on um, experts who can really support you in this work and guide you through it. Um, and don't expect that it has to only be your leaders who are the leader of this. Um, if you are in a predominantly white space, your leadership is most likely predominantly white as well, um, which means that you need to think about your, your whole staff, your entire community and say, who's in our community who's already doing this work and can support us in this work. Laquan, I think that was, that was very well said. This is, this is everyone's work. Everyone. I think that, I think, I think that, that all of us within the Delta community or within our greater um, society um, should, uh, should read your article. Um, and, and, and again, as, as we reach out and support each other, um, cross state lines, cross city lines, programs and things like that, we truly are an asset to uh, the adult ed work that we are doing. Super fortunate again as uh, members of COAID to have you within our family. And uh, we will be looking um, to you for, um, uh, we will be supporting you and we will be looking for you for some guidance and in, in the expertise that, that, that you provide um, right now. And so quite, quite fortunate again to have you. Again, the article is Let Us Teach Us, a diversity, a, a diversity call to action for adult education, not only in Maryland, but throughout the U.S. Um, also. So thank you for your time today. Uh, looking forward to the journal coming out and, um, and everyone being able to share would uh, get their Christmas present maybe a little bit later than I did, but a, a true joy to be able to, to read the article. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye.